Welcome back. In the last video, we finished um, by talking about the fault element and how useful that is to show a nice error message to our end users. And in this video, we're going to fix the error that's being shown by not creating the company field or not creating the lead with the company field. So let's open up screen one and we'll add one more call script here. So I'll drag a call script over and we'll just call it call script three. And I'll just say, awesome, may, and may I also have the name of the company you're calling with. And again, I'm doing my best to kind of make up some script text here, but we would have to check with Pedro, who is the um, you know sales manager, to see if this is what he would actually want. Um, but anyway, we can go back to fields. I, I think you'll notice here in the field section that every time I click on it for the first time, the record variable isn't stored there. That's totally okay. Uh, Salesforce is saving it. You just have to click on it again to access the fields. And I'm sure over time that will probably be fixed. So if you're watching this in the future, it might have already been updated. Um, but now that we added the record variable, variable back, I can drag the company field over here. And now this will automatically be populated uh, inside the flow. So let's press done and we'll press save. And we'll do a debug run here. And I just want to um, show you something about screen flows and then an interesting um, way we can fix the thing I'm about to show you. <laughs> so I'm gonna press debug and we'll go through and we'll make you know our Bob Apples record. So Mr. Uh, Bob Apples, and we'll say 444-777-8888, uh, bob at bobapples.com. And then it's like, awesome. And, and may I also have the name of the company you're calling with? We'll just call it Appleseed Enterprises. And so now our, our record will successfully be created. And I'm gonna press next. And you see that everything kind of runs through and it dumps us out on our final screen, which we didn't configure at all, but that's fine. That's what we wanted. Uh, you'll notice that we successfully created the lead over here. It's like all the records are ready to be created. And then down below it says the transaction was committed. So that means that the lead record was actually inserted into Salesforce. Let's go click on the Bertha Boxer record that we have open. And I'm just gonna click on leads. And you'll see for sure that Bob Apples is right here. So he was actually created. And so that's not always what I want to have happen when I'm debugging a screen flow. You know, when we actually deploy this flow, that's exactly what we want to have happen. But in the debugging process, you know, I may not want a ton of records just getting inserted into Salesforce. So I'm gonna go back to the debugger and close it out and then go back to our flow screen. And I wanna to introduce to you a new element called the rollback records. And as you might expect, this element uh, will roll back any record that's about to be created or updated in Salesforce. So I'm gonna highlight the connecting line between the create lead and the final screen. I'm gonna press delete. And then I'm gonna drag a rollback records to the canvas and we'll just call it rollback lead and I'm gonna press uh, done. And then I'm gonna connect the create records to the rollback records. And so it's important to understand we're only gonna be doing this while we're debugging the flow because when we actually deploy the flow, we don't need this rollback records here. So this element is useful for debugging and I'm gonna press save. And this warning issue is just saying, hey, the final screen isn't connected and that's totally fine. And we'll press debug. And so once again, I'm going to try to create a lead record. We'll call it Mr. We'll do Bob Apples again. Bob Apples, oops, 777-888-4444. Uh, Say Bob at BobApples.com. And then the company, again, we'll just do Appleseed Enterprises. And now when I press next, uh, you see everything goes through, but instead of being um, inserted into Salesforce, at the very bottom, instead of seeing the phrase transaction committed, we now see rollback records. It says the pending record changes in the current transaction are rolled back and not saved to the database. And so that's really helpful when we're debugging. Um, if you're ever working with a screen flow and you don't want it to be inserting records into Salesforce, you can always connect a rollback records next to your create element. And if you stack like let's say you have five create elements in a row, you can just put a rollback records at the end and all five of them uh, will automatically roll back. So I'm gonna close this and this is helpful for debugging. The other thing I wanna mention about it 
is that you can connect fault elements to this. So uh, the same way that we connected a fault element to this error screen, we could also, um, in other flow scenarios, we probably wouldn't do it here, um, but you could say, hey, you know, Flow Builder, if you have an error somewhere um, with any of the, you know, create or update or get records that I'm doing, just roll everything back. And that's a really uh, good way to have safety built into your flow. It's called error handling, where in case one thing in the flow fails, everything gets rolled back. And so we'll get more experience with that throughout the course, but I at least wanted to show you the rollback records now, tell you that it's helpful to uh, debug screen flows with, and let you know that you can connect fault elements to it while the fault element is still kind of fresh in your mind. So that was helpful. That's a good explanation of rollback records. And I think we'll just end the video there, keep it you know, focused on one topic. And in the next video, we'll create a second screen to collect some of the other information we need about the lead.